celebrate the International Day for the Teachers. I want to, on behalf of Ghana Education Service, extend our warmest, sincerest appreciation and gratitude to our teachers across the length and breadth of this country. Our teachers have actually proven that they would always be there for Ghana's education. Indeed, if you look at what we do at Ghana Education Service as implementers of Ghana's education policies, our teachers are playing a significant role in this enterprise. The learners across the length and breadth of this country have been receiving care, compassion, and education from these teachers in our country. Ghana's teachers indeed have always proven all over the world to be the best. And today I want to lead the entire management of Ghana Education Service to salute all teachers across the country. We don't need a single day to thank teachers for the work that, that they do. But uh, it is particularly important that on this day we appreciate the work of our teachers uh, and we appreciate the sacrifices they make uh, in building our nation. The nation Ghana has assigned a critical duty to Ghana Education Service to produce individuals with the requisite skills, knowledge, competence and the values so that they can meaningfully contribute to the national development. Management is therefore grateful to teachers for the critical role they've played in the success story of the service. The teachers uh, in Ghana and around the world um, make the world go round. They provide uh, us with all of the preparations that we need in, in order to face the challenges of the future. They do that every day in our classrooms and outside of our classrooms. This is an awesome day, a memorable day for our dear teachers of this land. You go the extra mile to turn dull students to happy, responsible children. We teachers remember our commitment to learners. To us, teaching is not just a job, but a lifestyle. We teach to touch the future. Our commitment will forever be in the minds of our learners. I want to take this opportunity to salute and congratulate all teachers in Ghana, especially those who recognize the need to pay particular attention to learners with special educational needs and disabilities. Teacher is the agent of change, and GES is happy to celebrate all teachers on this special occasion. We pray to the Almighty God for his continuous support and protection for all our teachers. So I want to take this opportunity to congratulate teachers on the hard work they are doing out there, especially supporting our girls and their brothers as well. Teachers are equal to you all. I urge you all to continue doing what you do best so that together we can transform our country through education. Aiko. Your hard work, dedication, and passion for teaching are truly appreciated. Thank, Thank you. Ghana, you can join me. Mount Ejo, you Papa. Yeah, my teacher, fully na Aiko. Muni Ejo, my Papa. Nami Shram. Ebani Ejo, Jogbe. Nami plus Sukuvio. Sukuvio by Akpena mi mi awe wado. Aiko to all our gallant teachers for all that you do for this country. Indeed, all professions can boost, but the teacher taught them all. I wish you a happy World Teachers Day. We're live in three, two, one. What's, what, what's the announcement again? Airtel Tigo is now 80. Ah, okay. We go live in 3, 2, 1. It's here for Airtel Tigo is now 80. It's Airtel Tigo. Ah, it's okay. It's now 80. Tell a neighbor to tell a neighbor that your favorite telecommunications, telecommunications network, Airtel Tigo, is now 80. Simple. 
New name, same affordable and reliable internet, credit cards, secure money services, and much more. AT, life is simple. Oh, him, uh, no, we are taking number first. By you. We are telling you to take the number again. Guys, now I'm tired. I'll go on a date with whoever gets here first. Princess, really? Okay. Are they come? Shut Boss, fill my tank with Super XP Run 95. Fill up with Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP High Performance Products from Goyle. Sorry, Tony got here first, so I'm stepping with him. Oh, cut him, cut him. Hey! Choose Super XP Run 95 and Diesel XP for an energizing driving experience. Always go for Goyle Super XP Run 95. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Goyle, Goyle is good energy. Pepsodent is aware that globally, one in two children suffer from cavities. That's why by giving up Pepsodent, you're not only protecting her teeth, but also helping her grow up and thrive at every stage of her life with a healthy and confident smile so she can succeed and achieve all of her dreams. Because every smile matters. You know the now. You are living the now. You feel secure in the now, but what about tomorrow? Grandpa, grandpa, chase me. What happens when you can no longer do the things you love? What happens to your loved ones when you are no longer here? Get Mikakrawa from Prudential Life now and protect your future and that of your loved ones. With as little as three Ghana CDs, Mikakrawa covers you in case of death, total and permanent disability, or critical illness.
Welcome to the quarterfinals of the 2023 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. This happens to be the 30th anniversary. Congratulations to all the schools who have made it this far. I am happy to introduce the Gold Super Bonanza. What this means is that each school that solves all four riddles in the final round are going to get 2,000 Ghana CDs. <laughs> if they solve three out of four, they get 1,600 Ghana CDs. <laughs> if it's two out of four, it's 1,000 Ghana CDs. And if it's just one, they get 500 Ghana CDs from Gaul. <laughs> Thank you, Gaul, for the super bonanza. I am sure our contestants are looking forward to that. In this very first quarterfinal competition, we are going to be seeing Wesley Girls High School. <laughs> In Prior to Senior High School, <laughs> and Bishop Herman College. <laughs> Before we meet the contestants, let me use this opportunity to acknowledge our sponsors. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Goal PLC and supported by Joy News, AT, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, Pepsodent Toothpaste, Better Malt, Ghanaian Academic and Research Network, Coronation Insurance, Accra College of Medicine, Academic City University College, Cowbell, Bell Beverages, GTP, Newmont Ghana, Africa World Airlines, and YFM. Now, my name is Elsie Efa Kaufman. I am an associate professor of biomedical engineering at the University of Ghana and also the dean of the School of Engineering Sciences, University of Ghana. This is a prime time production. Now the contestants. Wesley Girls High School is represented by Priska Ajadufie Yeboa. You are welcome, ladies. How are you doing? Fine, fine, thank you. This is the 30th anniversary of the National Science and Math Quiz. So I want us to chat a little bit about the National Science and Math Quiz. What do you think? Thank you. All right, that's good. When did you start watching it? Okay. Okay. I started in 2018. How old were you? Um, <laughs> in 2018. This is oh, this one is not a problem with the game. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> I was 11. 11. I was 11. OK, and you? So I started. Yeah, I think in 2018 too. I, thought, I started when my star came to senior high school, so yeah, 2018. All right. Yes. And what do you like about it? Oh, the competitiveness and the excitement and everything about it. All right. I know you're going to be putting in your best, so I won't ask him, so you tell me. So I wish you well. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Prior to senior high school is represented by what you also love it. Sakiti Collins. You're welcome, gentlemen. In prior so have you been to quarterfinals before? No, please. No, this is your first time in the quarterfinals. Yes. Oh, you are most welcome. Yes. I like to welcome people into the quarterfinals. 
Thank yes. You. So about the National Science and Math Quiz, when did you gentlemen start watching it? I actually started no longer ago. It was when I came to SHS that I was introduced to it. All right. Then so I started somewhere around form one. Okay. Yeah, somewhere in 2021. I yeah, see. I and you're already here. <laughs> That's good. And you? The same, please. The same time? Yes. Okay. What has been the benefit of this program to you? Okay. First of all, it gives us that opportunity to bring forth what we, we know. Mm -hmm. It gives you the opportunity to show what you also got. And then it's uh, an opportunity to also exhibit your school. So, okay. Yeah. That's good. All right. I know you are also going to be putting in your best. Sure. Uh -huh. So I wish you well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bishop Herman College is represented by Wisdom BT. We this year. You are welcome, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. How are you? We are yeah. fine. Great. Now your experience with the National Science and Math Quiz. When did you start watching National Science and Math Quiz? Well, for me, when I came to Form 1, I didn't know of the quiz when I was in JHS, but when I came to Form 1, I came to know of it. All right, and you? Same. Yeah, I came to SHS before I knew about the quiz. I see. Yes. So how were you entertaining yourself before the National Science and Math Quiz? Uh, we trained and had trial contests with other schools and that has boosted our courage and then our speed and accuracy. That was your entertainment? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Yes, I know you're also going to be putting in your best. Yes, please. I wish you well. Thank you.
contestants, as always, the contest comes to you in five rounds. The first round is a round for fundamental concepts. The questions are simple and direct. I'm expecting simple and direct answers from you. If you answer your major question correctly, three points. If the question is incorrectly answered, it becomes available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If right, one bonus point. If not, there is a penalty. One point. For questions which require calculations, you have 30 seconds to present your answer. If there are no calculations, you have 10 seconds to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, you are to attempt each question once only. Best wishes to all three schools. All right. For this first set, it's a single question to all three schools. When I get to your school, you give me a right answer. I move on for the next right answer to the same question. This time, no bonus. All right. So, and you can do this in 10 seconds. All right. I will be starting with you, Bishop Herman, after I read the question. All right. Catalytic converters catalyze redox reactions that convert gaseous pollutants in exhaust gas into less toxic forms, thereby reducing air pollution. When I get to your school, please name one, only one metal that is commonly employed as a catalyst in an automotive catalytic converter. First choice, Bishop Herman. Nico. 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 That's incorrect, so I'm moving on. And prior, so you, go ahead, Clavet. Platinum. Platinum. You are right. <laughs> Wesley Girls. Yes. Palladium. Palladium. You are right. The other one is rhodium, rhodium. Next. It's another question that goes around for answers. And so I'm going to start by reading the question, then I come to you for the right answer, after which I move on to the next school for the next right answer. So the question is, mention any one of the growth Faces of the bacterial growth curve. First choice, Bishop Herman. Wisdom. The sporocyte growth phase. That's incorrect. And so in prior so. In prior so. Yes, Clavet. We have the. Replication growth phase. No. Wesley Girls. Prisca. The lag phase. Yes. <laughs> so there are several of them. In fact, there are four phases. You have the phase of decline, also known as the death phase. You have the log or exponential phase. Then, of course, the lag phase that we got from Wesley Girls, and then there's a stationary phase. Next set, you need 30 seconds, and there's a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the equation of the curve with giving gradient dy dx, where k is a constant to be determined. Did you get your preamble? One more time. Find the equation of the curve with given gradient dy dx, where k is a constant to be determined. So, Bishop Herman, for you, dy dx is equal to 3x squared plus 2kx, and passing through the points p with coordinates 1, 5, and q with coordinates Two six. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, wisdom. Y is equal to x x to the power 3 plus minus x to the power 2 plus 4. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> Wesley Girls. Preska. Y is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared minus 2. That's incorrect. <laughs> I'll hold on to the answer for a bit. All right, with the same preamble in Priceful. dy dx is equal to 3kx squared plus 4x and passing through the points P with coordinates 1, 3, and Q with coordinates negative 1, negative 5. Clavet. Um, you have the equation y is equal to okay, two x cube plus two x squared minus one. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right, I'm holding on to your answer as well. With the same preamble, Wesley girls, for you, dy dx is equal to 6x squared plus k. And passing through the point p with coordinates negative 1, 8, and q with coordinates 1, negative 4. Yes, na, nana. Y is equal to two x cube. Y is equal to two x cube minus eight x plus two. You are right. Bishop Herman, your, your equation was y is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared plus 6. And in prior, so your equation is y is equal to 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3. All right, next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. A vehicle mounted early warning system broadcasts a 625 hertz tone from a loudspeaker array when the speed of sound in still air is 345 meters per second. Please, did you get your preamble? No. Okay. A vehicle mounted early warning system broadcasts a 625 hertz tone from a loudspeaker array when the speed of sound in still air is 345 meters per second. Now, Bishop Herman, what is the frequency perceived by a stationary observer when the vehicle is approaching at 5.00 meters per second?
Yes, wisdom. We have th three hundred and and twelve heads. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> All right, I'm saving it. In prayer, so with the same preamble. What is the frequency perceived by a stationary observer when the vehicle is receding at 15.0 meters per second? Is that hand up, Clavet? Go ahead. Madam, the frequency perceived is equal to 687 hertz. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> Wesley Girls, with the same preamble. What is the speed of the vehicle when a stationary observer perceives a frequency of 675 hertz? Is your hand up, Nana? Yes, please. The speed is 300, 356 meters per second. That's incorrect for a bonus. <laughs> ah, this was a difficult one for all schools. Bishop Herman, your answer was 634 heads. In prior, so yours was 599 heads. And Wesley Girls, yours was 25.6 meters per second. I know by next year you would have figured out how to do this. Next set, 30 seconds, with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Give the systematic name of the major product formed in the given reaction. In other words, I'm going to give you a reaction. Kindly give the systematic name of the major product formed in the reaction. All right, Bishop Herman. The reaction of 3-methylcyclopentene with hydrogen gas. Wisdom. 3 methyl cyclopentene. That's incorrect. Okay. For a bonus. Yes, uh, Wesley Girls, which of you? Preska. Methyl cyclopentene. Yes. <laughs> By the way, if you don't raise your hand, I am at liberty to call either one of you. Okay, with the same preamble in prior so. The reaction of 2-ethyl-1-butene with hydrogen chloride. Yes, go ahead, Collins. You have three clue, three metal painting. Yes. <laughs> Wesley Girls with the same preamble. The reaction of one for dimethyl cyclohexene 
with hydrogen bromide. Nana. One bromo, one for dimethyl cyclohexene. Yes. For the next set, you only need 10 seconds, and I have another preamble to all schools. Preamble. Indicate the part of the stomach of humans to which the following description refers. So I'm going to give you a description. Indicate the part of the stomach of humans to which the description I give you refers. All right, Bishop Herman. It is a section of the stomach that connects to the esophagus. This is where food enters the stomach. Wisdom. The cardiac section. The cardiac section. The cardiac section. Cardiac. Cardiac. That's incorrect. Yes, go ahead. The cardiac section. Cardia. Cardia. With the same preamble in prior so. It is a dome-shaped section at the top of the stomach. It does not usually store food unless the stomach is full. It stores any gas that is a byproduct of digestion. Yes, Clavet. Um, the fundus. Yes. Wesley girls with the same preamble. It is the funnel-shaped section of the stomach that controls the rate at which food empties from the stomach into the small intestine. Nana. The pyloric sphincter. No. Yes. Station. Yes. It's not the sphincter. Mm. All right. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the value of N, given that... I hope you got your preamble. It was very short. All right. So, Bishop Herman, 1, 2, 3 to the base N is equal to 3, 8 to the base 10. Wisdom? N is five. You are right. <laughs> In prior school, with the same preamble, one, three, two to the base N is equal to five, six to the base 10. Yes, Clavet. N is six. You're right. <laughs> With the same preamble, one, one, five to the base N is equal to seven, seven to the base 10. Nana. N is equal to eight. Yes. Well done on that one. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Please listen carefully. A liquid of mass 
0.16 kilogram, initial temperature 25 degrees Celsius, and specific heat capacity 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin is contained in a well-insulated vessel of negligible heat capacity. Find the equilibrium temperature of the vessel and its contents following the given event. Please, did you get your preamble? No? All right, once again. A liquid of mass 0.16 kilogram, initial temperature 25 degrees Celsius, and a specific heat capacity 4.2 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin is contained in a well-insulated vessel of negligible heat capacity. Find the equilibrium temperature of the vessel and its contents following the given event. Now, Bishop Herman, an object of heat capacity 75 joule per Kelvin and temperature 480 degrees Celsius is dropped into the liquid. Wisdom. Yeah. The final temperature to be for 46 point 46 degrees Celsius. That's incorrect for bonus. Yeah, okay. All right. I will hold on to it. And price all. With the same preamble, an object of heat capacity 250 joule per Kelvin and temperature 80 degrees Celsius is dropped into the liquid. Yes, Clavet. But um, the final temperature is given by the final temperature is equal to two 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 hundred and fifty. 225 Kelvin. That's incorrect for a bonus. All right, I'm holding on to the answer. I'm moving on, Wesley Girls. With the same preamble, an object of heat capacity 618 joule per Kelvin and temperature 10 degrees Celsius is dropped into the liquid. Mm -hmm. Nana. Um, the final temperature is equal to 40 42 degrees Celsius. That's incorrect for bonus. Ah, another thing for you to work on for next year, right? Bishop Herman, yours was 71 degrees Celsius. In prior, so yours was 40 degrees Celsius. That was a very slow, drawn out 200 and something Celsius from you. Uh, 40 degrees. I'm patient in my old age. Uh huh. And uh, Wesley Girls, 18 degrees Celsius. 
Next set, 30 seconds, with a short preamble. Preamble to all schools. Assuming that the given compound exists, calculate the molar mass of element X if... That's a preamble. Did you hear it? Good. So, Bishop Herman, the mass of 0 0.150 moles of H2X2O8 is 26.4 grams. Four gram per mole. That's incorrect for bonus. <laughs> Allow them. Okay, go ahead. Fifty five point zero gram per mole. Pardon? Fifty five. That's incorrect. Hmm. With the same preamble in Priceo, the mass of 0 0.0250 moles of calcium, and now I have in brackets X2O5. The bracket has a subscript 2, is 8.20 grams. Yes, Colin. Go ahead. Um, the molar mass of X is 104 gram per mole. That's incorrect for bonus. Yes. 32.0 gram per mole. Again? 32.0 gram That's per mole. That's right. <laughs> Wesley Girls with the same preamble, the mass of 0 0.0150 moles of NaH, and now I have a bracket, X2O7 in the bracket, and the subscript of 3 for the bracket is 7.11 grams. Yes, Nana. The mass, the molar mass, sorry, of X is equal to. Is one. 9 gram per mole. That is 19 gram per mole. I'm not accepting it for bonus. Yes. 19.0 gram per mole. 19.0 gram per mole. <laughs> Next set, 10 seconds. Bishop Herman, which bones form the wishbone or fecula of birds? Wisdom. The shoulder bone and then the chest bone. Incorrect for a bonus. Is that Clavicle. 
In Priso, what name is given to the sound box of birds? Yes, Clave. Madam, it is the the pharynx. No. For a bonus. It's called the syrinx. Syrinx. Mm. Very beautiful word. S Y R I N X. Syrinx. So now, if you didn't learn anything at all today, this is your word. Vocab. All right. Syrinx. Okay. Wesley Girls, where exactly is the syrinx of birds situated? Yes, Priska. So it is located at it's located at the beginning of the pharynx. I'm not accepting that for bonus. Okay. So more things to learn about the syrinx. So if you want to find the syrinx, you have to go to the point where the windpipe divides into two. This is at the base of the trachea, right? Uh -huh. So that's where to find the syrinx. So now vocab plus location, you are all set to go, people. Next set, 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Solve the absolute value inequality. That's a preamble. Bishop Herman, your inequality. One less than the absolute value of the expression x minus 3, less than 7. Yes, Maudufia. We have it to be four less than x less than ten, or x is less than negative four, or x is greater than two. That's incorrect. I'm not accepting it for bonus. Hmm. All right, I'll hold on to the answer. With the same, with the same preamble, and give me your answer carefully, please. Five less than the absolute value of the expression x minus four less than 10. Yes, Clavet. Um, we have the expression 9 less than x less than 14, or negative 1 less than x less than negative 6. Hmm. I'm not accepting your side, I'll come back. Wesley girls with the same preamble. Seven, less than the absolute value of the expression x plus two, less than 15. Yes, Nana. 
So 5 less than x less than 13 or negative 17 less than x less than negative 9. Okay, I'm giving you 2 out of 3. Okay, so I wanted very nice formal answers. Mm. So for you, Bishop Herman, is the set of values of x such that, did any of you tell me this? Is the set of values of x such that 4 less than x less than 10 or negative 4 less than x less than 2? All right. For prior so your answer was the set of va all values of x such that negative 6 less than x less than negative 1 or 9 less than x less than 14. All right. And Wesley girls, can you tell me the right answer? The set of all values of x such that 5 less than x less than 13 or negative 17 less than x less than negative 9. That is it. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, last set of questions for the round. 30 seconds with a preamble to all schools. Preamble. Find the power factor of a series AC circuit with the given values of resistance R and reactance X. You may leave your answer as a fraction. Did you get your preamble, please? Great. Bishop Herman, R is equal to 50 ohms and X is equal to 120 ohms. iPhone 12. That's incorrect. Yes. And price for club it. Five on thirteen. Yes. <laughs> now, your major question with the same preamble. R is equal to sixty ohm, and X is equal to eighty ohms. Club it. 3 over 5. Yes. <laughs> Wesley Girls, last question with the same preamble. R is equal to 100 ohms and X is equal to 75 ohms. Prisca. Four on five. Again. Four on five. Yes. <laughs> and with that, we've come to the end of the first round.
At the end of the first round, Bishop Herman College has four points. In Priyasu Senior High School has 18 points. Wesley Girls High School has 20 points. Well done contestants, but there's still a long way to go. Four more rounds. But before we begin the second round, Wesley Girls High School would like to effect a substitution. Priska, it's been a pleasure having you. Best wishes. And we have Zakia coming on for Priska. You're welcome, Zakia. Welcome. is the Pepsodent Speed Race. The questions in the round are presented to all three schools at the same time. For an opportunity to answer a question, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell, Wesley Girls? Thank you. Yours, and Priyasu. Thank you. And yours, Bishop Herman. Thank you. If you ring an answer correctly on the first attempt, three points. If it's a second attempt, two points. If it's a third attempt, one point. But you must be careful, because if you attempt to answer a question and you are unsuccessful, unsuccessful means you provide a wrong answer, or you are not able to provide an answer within three seconds, you lose a precious point. Mm. In order to alert you that your three seconds are up, we have a bell. May I hear the bell for the three seconds? Thank you. Once you hear that, it means you have lost the one point. Don't bother continuing. Mm. We give a chance to the other schools to continue. All right. If the question involves calculations, you have a maximum of 30 seconds to answer. If there are no calculations, you have a maximum of 10 seconds. Best wishes, everyone. First set of questions will require 10 seconds of your time for each. First question. The gastric glands are situated in which layer of the stomach? All right, is the innermost or mucosa layer. Next one, long hollow bones and connected air sacs are the characteristic features of which class of organisms? Class RV. Yes. Next one. Where can one locate the hormone response element in 11 cell.
Okay, if you go searching for the hormone response element, you must look for the DNA. All right. Next set, 30 seconds each. First one. A solution was formed by dissolving 0.915 gram of potassium perbromate in enough water to obtain a total volume of 200.0 centimeter cubed. What is the molarity of this solution? Atomic mass for bromine is 80.0 gram per mole. Yes, which of you? Nana? 0 0.0250 mole per dm cube. You are right. <laughs> Next one. Give the sum of the whole number coefficients of reactants and products in the balanced equation of the reaction that occurs during the displacement reaction of lead with phosphoric acid. Yes, which of you, Nana? Nine. Yes. <laughs> Next one. The reaction between a nuclide and curium-246, atomic number 96, produces nobelium-254, atomic number 102, and five neutrons. Identify the nuclide. Yes, Nana. Ca carbon. Carbon 14. That's incorrect. Who rang next? <laughs> yes, go ahead. In prior so. Carbon 13. Yes. <laughs> next one, 30 seconds. Find the angular speed of a sphere 20 seconds after it starts spinning, about a diameter under the action of a steady 2 times 10 raised to the power negative 2 newton meter torque, if its moment of inertia is 5 times 10 raised to the power negative 5 kilogram meter squared, about a diameter. In prior so clavet. Go. 400 rad per second. That's incorrect. <laughs> yes, Nana. Mm. 8 times 10 exponents, 3 rad per second. You are right. <laughs> Next one, 30 seconds. Find the electric field at the origin due to a 10 nanocoulomb point charge at 3.0 I meter and a negative 10 nanocoulomb point charge at 3.0 J meter. Nana. Zero Go. volts per meter. That's incorrect. <laughs> hmm, right answer is negative ten I plus ten J volt per meter. 
Next one, 10 seconds. Name the background radiation that accompanies characteristic X-rays generated by bombarding a target with accelerated electrons. Yes, Nana. Go. Brem Shalong. Yes. <laughs> Last set of questions for the round, 30 seconds each. Find the cosine of the angle between the vectors. A is equal to 3i plus 2j, and B is equal to 2i minus... Yes, go ahead and try it so quick. A fraction with the numerator. Yes, a fraction do that, do that. with numerator z zero. And so like I'm zero. moving on. 2i minus 2j. Yes, Bishop Herman. Yes. Yeah. Wisdom. We have what? 13 over root 13. That's incorrect. You have to ring for it. A fraction with numerator root 26 and denominator 26. Yes. Hey. Okay, answer. <laughs> you want to be like Nebuchadnezzar. You want to give the question and then interpret the question and answer it too. Right? Okay. Find the value of the infinite series 10 plus 1. Yes, go ahead. A fraction, a fraction with numerator. 10 and denominator 9. That's incorrect. Who else rang? 100 over 9. 100 over 9. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Consultants, your series is predictable. All right. Last one for the round. Solve the radical equation. 2 plus square root of the expression 3x minus 2 is equal to x. Yes. Wisdom. x is equal to 4. No. Uh, prior so. Oh, no. Go ahead. x is equal to 6 or X is equal to 1. No. In prior so. X is equal to 6. Yes. Okay. So I know it's speed race. You are not supposed to be spending too much time. But you must still do your common sense checks. Huh? So if you look at it, you'll see that X is equal to 1 is not a root of the original equation if you check it. So the right answer is six. And on that note, we've come to the end of the second round. Student is aware that globally, one in two children suffer from cavities. That's why by giving her Pepsodent, you're not only protecting her teeth, but also helping her grow up and thrive at every stage of her life with a healthy and confident smile so she can succeed and achieve all of her dreams. Because every smile matters. now 
You are living the now. You feel secure in the now. But what about tomorrow? What happens when you can no longer do the things you love? What happens to your loved ones when you are no longer here? Get Mikakrawa from Prudential Life now and protect your future and that of your loved ones. With as little as three Ghana CDs, Mikakrawa covers you in case of death, total and permanent disability, or critical illness. At the end of the second round, Bishop Herman College has seven points. In Priceful Senior High School has 19 points. Wesley Girls High School has 28 points. We are at the top of the third round. This round has the problem of the day. And at stake in the round is the Prudential Life Insurance NSMQ star. The NSMQ star is given to a school that earns a perfect score of 10 points. At this stage, the star is worth 2,800 Ghana CDs. I know you'll all be working hard for that, right? Yes, good. So the problem of the day is a single question to all three schools. It's a more engaging question, so it will keep you for four minutes. At the end of the four minutes, you are, to present your so, you are to present your solution for adjudication, right? So you present your answers on the uh, screens behind you, and I will come around and check. Okay, please, you may stand. Drop your pens. And... Now, let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. Problem of the day. A hydrated inorganic salt in the laboratory has lost its label. To identify the formula of the salt, a student measures 10.0 grams of the salt and heats it gently to dryness. At this point, the salt has lost 47.2% of its mass. In other experiments, the student determined the percentage composition of the elements present in the anhydrous salt as 11.1% aluminum, 9.50% sodium, 26.5% sulfur, and 52.9% oxygen. Ladies and gentlemen, please determine the empirical formula of the hydrated salt. This is your problem of the day. You may now begin.
stop writing and resume your seats.
the contestants have presented their answers. Before I award the points, let's look at the suggested solution from the consultants. This is a problem from chemistry, an interested one. So contestants were told that there is a hydrated inorganic salt in the lab and it does not have a label. This is a problem, and since our science students are problem solvers, we expect them to be able to sol solve such a problem. So they are to identify the formula of the salt because all chemicals in the lab must be labeled. And the student now takes 10.0 grams of the salt heats it up gently until it's dry. What this means is that all the hydration, the water, is gone, right? That's what this means. And then, at this point, the salt has lost 47.2% of its mass, so this is associated with the hydration. Then there are other experiments that are done left to another day, but our science students can do these experiments. And so the student has determined that the composition of the Salt is 11.1% aluminum, 9.5% sodium, 26.5% sulfur, and 52.9% oxygen. So if you have all of this information, you should be able to determine the formula of the hydrated salt. The challenge was the time. So you, if you have four minutes to do this, a good approach would be to first determine the empirical formula of the anhydrous salt, uh, you see, we have a certain proverb in Akan that says, Ye die hiya. <laughs> So you do the first things first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so then given the percentage loss of water, we can then determine the mass of the hydrated compound and hence its formula. Okay? So first thing is to start with the anhydrous salt. So you have sodium, aluminum, sulfur, and oxygen. You've been given the masses. You know atomic masses of all of these things. So you use that information, of course, right? So you divide the mass by the atomic mass for each of these. The values are given. You were not given atomic masses, but at this level, quarterfinals, you all know them. Uh -huh. So we have, uh, for sodium, you have 9.5.0. 9.50 divided by 23 uh, to give you 0 0.413 moles of sodium. For aluminum, you have 11.1 divided by 27 to give you 0 0.411 moles of aluminum. For sulfur, you have 26.5 divided by 32 to give you 0 0.828 moles of sulfur. And then for oxygen, you have 52.9 divided by 16 to give you 3.31 moles. Now, you get the simplest fraction, uh, the simplest ratios. So you take, you take the smallest one, the smallest number of moles is 0 0.411, divide all of them and get the simplest ratio. And you'll get one for sodium, one for aluminum, two for sulfur, and eight for oxygen. If you're able to get to this point, I'm giving one point for each of the corrected <laughs> Simple ratios. Uh, so that gives you four points. So the empirical formula for the anhydrous salt is going to be NaAlS2O8. For collecting all the information in this manner, you get one more point. So at this point, five points. Now you look at the empirical formula mass is 242 gram per mole. And so the mass of the hydrated salt, now we just basically are using our fractions, right? We know all the information we have now. So it's 242, which we just calculated, divided by, which we just mentioned, divided by 1 minus 0 0.472. That comes from the 47.2%, right? Okay, so that will give you 458 gram per mole of the hydrated salt as its mass. If you have this information, you can do a lot of things. So you now know the mass of the water of hydration is going to be the 458 minus 242 to give you 216 gram per mole. Now we know the molar mass of water, right? So if you want to know the number of molecules or the number of moles of water, we'll take this 216 gram per mole, divide by 18, and we'll get 12. If you get this far, you get to the 12 
you get four more points. And so now you know how much water there is, you know how much of the anhydrous material there is, the formula, you can put everything together. So you have Na, Na, Al, S2O8, dot, water of hydration now comes in, 12 H2O, and you get one more point to make five points for that part of it, making a total of 10 points. This was the suggested solution from the consultants. Now, what did our contestants do? Uh, Bishop Herman. Bishop Herman, you started, you did something, right? So you set up the equation. You actually, um, you, 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 did, you did try. You set up all four to get the number of moles of, for the anhydrous salt. However, you didn't conclude to the calculation of number of moles. Neither did you arrive at the ratios, the simplest ratios. For setting those equations up, I'm giving you one point. Then the rest of it, eventually maybe you would have had something, but to be honest, in the time available, I doubt that you would, especially since you didn't have the anhydrous material, how would you ever arrive at this water? So I'm not giving anything else. Okay, so that leaves you with one out of 10. Um, in prior so, in prior so you started, you also did something. I think all of you wanted to start with the water. I don't know why. Anyway, you did some calculations. You were working with two significant figures for the values of the number of moles. You were able to do a, the calculation for sodium, for sulfur, for aluminum. You didn't do anything for the oxygen. And so uh, the best that I can give you at this point will be, although it's, I would have liked the three significant figures, but I'll, I'll still give you three for uh, two significant figures for number of moves. The rest, I can't add anything else, right? So you wind up with three out of 10. Wesley girls also very interested in the water of hydration for some reason. So you started out with the water of hydration calculation, which will wind you in all kinds of troubles eventually, if you don't know what the anhydrous thing is. Uh, you went ahead and you were cal doing your calculations to one significant figure only, to be fast, but even then you couldn't uh, get all of them right. For, you had the wrong value for oxygen completely, right? Uh -huh. You are an order of magnitude off for the oxygen, so that would not even have given you the right anhydrous compound for you to do the calculation properly, okay? So um, I'm going to give you three points for the ones that you did. Sodium, aluminum, and sulfur. Oxygen, no. And then you would not have arrived at the water of hydration with your anhydrous than the way it was. So I'm not giving you anything else. So you also have three out of 10. Oh. The NSMQ star has gone waste. Uh, Prudential Life Insurance, can you give me the star? <laughs> anyway, so that's the end of the problem of the day and the end of round three.
Bishop Herman College would like to effect a substitution. Um, Maudufia, thank you for being with us. Best wishes in everything you do. Okay, so Patrick is coming on. You're welcome, Patrick. Round four. In this round, I'm going to be presenting you with statements. When you receive a statement, please consider it carefully and let me know whether it's true or false. If you're right, two points. If you're incorrect, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to respond, in which case that statement is available to the two remaining schools. A school may ring and attempt an answer. If you're right, two full points. If not, there's a penalty, one point. If it's a regular statement, you'll have 10 seconds to respond. If their calculations are alert you, and you have 30 seconds to respond. Best wishes to all three schools. I'm starting with you, Bishop Herman. Your statement. Oscillations of an air column in a tube closed at one end and open at the other end occur with a displacement antinode at the closed end of the tube. Yes, Patrick? False. You are right. Impressive. The lowest frequency oscillation of a column of air in a tube closed at one end and open at the other end occurs with a wavelength approximately equal to four times the length of the tube. Clavet. False. No. That's a true statement. Wesley girls, oscillations of an air column in a tube closed at one end and open at the other end occur with a pressure antinode at the open end of the tube. Nana? True. No, that's a false statement. <laughs> Next set with a very short preamble. Preamble to all schools. For an obtuse angle A, as a preamble, Bishop Herman, cosine of A is positive. Patrick? False. Yes. <laughs> so sine of A is negative. Yes, False. go ahead. False. Yes. <laughs> Tangent of A is positive. Nana? False. Yes. <laughs> Next set, preamble to all schools. Preamble. <coughs> Excuse me.
available to all schools. Indicate whether the statement I give you is true or false with regard to limitations of ecological pyramids. Did you get that? Great. Your statement, Bishop Herman. They assume a simple food chain and do not consider food webs. Patrick. False. No, that's a true statement. <laughs> In Priceo, with the same preamble, saprotrophs are not given any place. Clavet. False. No, it's a true statement. <laughs> with the same preamble, they do not take into account the same species belonging to two or more trophic levels. Zakia. True. Yes. <laughs> Bishop Herman, during Sigma bond formation, P orbitals overlap head on to form strong bonds. Patrick? True. No. That's a false statement. In Priso, during hybridization in carbon, Hybrid orbitals always have lower energy than the unhybridized orbitals from which they are formed. Yes. True. No. The lack of free rotation around carbon-carbon single bonds is due to the strong attraction of sigma bonds. Nana? True. No. <laughs> Next set. Preamble to all schools. Preamble. Consider the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. That's your preamble. Bishop Herman. A transition from the level with principal quantum number five to the level with principal quantum number one is accompanied by the emission of four photons. Yes, Patrick? It's false. Yes. Right, so only transitions between adjacent levels are allowed. Yes, Clavet? False. Yes. In a transition between any pair of levels, the energy of the photon involved in the transition equals the energy difference for the two levels. Yes, Zakia? True. Yes. <laughs> a function is not necessarily a mapping. Patrick? True. Oh, no. That's a false statement. A function is a relation. Yes, Clavet? True. Yes. A relation is not necessarily a mapping. Nana? False. Ooh. <laughs> That's a true statement.
Archbishop Herman, apart from the conventional use, dialysis can also be used in acute poisoning. Patrick? True. Yes. <laughs> Apart from the conventional use, dialysis can also be used in blood transfusions. Yes, Clavet. True. Oh, no. Oh, no. Apart from the conventional use, dialysis can also be used in treating low blood pressure. Zakia? False. False. Yes, it's false. Last set of statements for the round. Cesium has the lowest first ionization energy compared with rubidium and barium. Yes, Patrick? True. Yes. Magnesium has the smallest atomic radius compared with aluminium and scandium. Clavet? False. Yes. <laughs> Last statement of the round, Wesley girls. Sodium has the highest electron affinity compared with lithium and calcium. Nana? Sure. No. That's a false statement. And that's the end of the fourth round. of the fourth round. Bishop Herman College has 15 points. Empire Sioux Senior High School has 26 points. Wesley Girls High School has 35 points. Round five. In this round, we have the Gold Super Bonanza. 
Honestly, I wish I were a contestant. <laughs> if you solve four riddles in this round, you get 2,000 Ghana CDs from Goyle. If you solve three riddles, you get 1,600 Ghana CDs. If you solve two of the riddles, you get 1,000 Ghana CDs. And if you solve even one, you get 500 Ghana CDs. I don't see how you can live with nothing, <laughs> honestly. Mm. So we are grateful to Goyle, good energy. All right, obviously we are going to be solving riddles in this round. I'll be reading out the clues. For an opportunity to solve a riddle, you must ring for it. May I hear your bell? Wesley girl, thank you. Yours, and Priyaso. Thank you. And yours, Bishop Herman. Thank you. If you solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. On the second clue, four points. On the third or any clue thereafter, three points. When you ring, the answer must be snappy. I will not wait. There are four riddles. First one. I am a chemical element in the news lately. I have properties of metals and non-metals. I am largely produced as a byproduct of zinc production. I am currently the subject of an export ban from China, a country that accounts for about 60% of my supply. Yes. Silicon. No, that's incorrect. I am named after a country. Yes. Germanium. Yes. Yeah! They saw the riddle on the fifth clue, three points. Next one. I am a model in botany. I was independently proposed by a Russian-born scientist of the University of Kiev, Ukraine, in 1927, and another scientist of the California Institute of Technology in 1928. Although I have been criticized and continue to be refined, I have largely stood the test of time. The basic elements of me are that oxen is the sole hormone that controls growth in gravitropism and phototropism. I owe my existence to Cholodny or Kolodny and Went, who independently. <laughs> yes. Nana. Acid growth theory. The acid growth theory. No. Who independently presented an elegant model of me. So who am I? Yes, Clavet. Well, um, you are the Colossian model. Yes. <laughs> Next one. I am a physical quantity. I am closely associated with energy. Specifically, I am a derivative of energy that is taken subject to particular restrictions. Two systems are said to be in thermal equilibrium. Yes. Nana. Heat energy. Heat energy. Mm. Um, you are power. No. It's not a derivative. Did anyone else ring? Okay, so I continue. Two systems are said to be in thermal equilibrium if they have the same value of me. Yes, Clavet. Temperature. Yes. <laughs> they solved the riddle on the fourth clue, three points. Last one. Hmm. 
I am a square three digit number. My first digit is an unusual prime number. My second digit is a Q. Yes, Patrick. 289. You are right. They solved it on the third clue. Three points. Three points. of the contest here are the final scores. Bishop Herman College has 21 points. <laughs> Impressive Senior High School has 32 points. And Wesley Girls High School has 35 points. <laughs> Bishop Herman, that was quite something with the riddles. I you wish there were more riddles, right? Uh, Unfortunately, we must say goodbye for this year. Best wishes to both of you. Well done. In Price Senior High School, first time in the quarterfinals and doing so well. Well done. Unfortunately, we must say goodbye. Thank you so much for giving us such a great contest. Uh, all the best to you. Wesley Girls High School. <laughs> Congratulations on winning the contest. Congratulations. That was quite a scare, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, you've done it. Um, if the score of yours stays the highest for the day, there is a highest scorer award, which at this stage is worth 3,000 Ghana CDs. And the highest scorer award is sponsored by 80. Life is simple. So we'll watch and see. But 
more interestingly, you have made it into the semi-finals. Congratulations again. I look forward to seeing you. All the best. Viewers. Thank you so much for joining us for this contest. It's been an exciting one. It's only the first of the quarterfinals. But before we go, let me acknowledge the sponsors. The National Science and Math Quiz is proudly sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with Gulf PLC and supported by Joy News, AT, Prudential Life Insurance Ghana, Pepsodent Toothpaste, Better Malt, Ghanaian Academic and Research Network, Coronation Insurance, Accra College of Medicine, Academic City University College, Cowbell, Bell Beverages, GTP, Newmont Ghana, Africa World Airlines, and YFM. Please plan to be with us next time when we bring you another quarterfinal contest, this time featuring Osechi Chie Senior High School, Kumase High School, and Achimota School. Thank you so much for joining us this time. My name is Elsie Fakofman, and see you next time. Bye.